it's past chairman for the Association of Road Contractors. Mr. Hewton, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Daniel, and uh, a very good morning to, to all the listeners. Okay. We also have with us on the phone lines Kobna Tabedu, who is a procurement expert. Mr. Atabedu, good morning. Thanks for your time. Mr. Atabedu, good morning. Okay, we are rectifying the issue with the phone lines to get Mr. Tabedu. But of course, we'll begin with you, Mr. Hutton, in the studio. We also have Raymond here. Now, now Mr. Hutton, yesterday is when we began this conversation. And the summary of it all really was that we have awarded too many contracts and we don't have money to pay off these contractors. But this did not start today, did it? I mean, it goes way back to 2007, 2008, right? Yeah, exactly so. I uh, This problem has been with us for... Uh, yes, if not decades. But I think it's it's all because of the fact that uh, we're not cutting our quota according to our size. That's number one. And number two, the fund which is supposed to be used to pay for the jobs that we're doing is not, um, let me say, um, commensurate with the works that are awarded. And so if, for instance, in a year, the fund is yielding close to $1 billion now. What it means is that contracts that are awarded should be within that limit. Because normally maintenance projects don't go beyond one year. Root, uh, road maintenance projects, periodic maintenance, routine maintenance, they don't go be beyond one year. And so if we are able to plan our activities well, what it will mean is that within the one year, we can be able to do works to the tune of about a billion cities, okay. which for us, uh, it's, it's quite large. Had it not been for the fact that we've not managed it well, because in the past, that's about around 2016, the fund was yielding just around 300 million Ghana cities. So for it to jump from 300 million Ghana cities to 1.2 billion, it's, it's, it's a huge jump. Mm. And so when this thing happened, all of us were excited. Because we knew that now the problem of delays in payment and all others are going to be over. Then, unfortunately, something was introduced called enhanced road fund. And this enhanced road fund is what we've been seeing okay. within the cities. Okay. This uh, asphalting and all others. I, I, I would like you to explain that a bit more in detail when I come back to you. But um, um, Kobna Tabedu is a procurement expert. He's joined us on the line. Uh, Mr. Tabedu, good morning again. Thanks for your, your time. Good morning, Daniel, and, and good morning to your listeners. Mr. Hilton makes three major points. We are awarding too many contracts that we don't have enough money to pay, and it's because of poor planning and poor management. You agree? Fully. Why? At law, there's something called nimbo dat rule, which in Latin basically says nimbo dat quod non habiet. It means you cannot spend what you don't have. Therefore, when you spend money that you don't have, it is a violation of, of principle. If we don't have the spend in the budget, it means it hasn't been appropriated. It means if you commit, you have broken a law. Why are we not dealing with those who cause these problems? The problem is that we have a referee and a player who is, and the match commissioner all playing the game. So the very people who are dishing out the contracts are the same people who are supposed to police the law and are supposed to, to try people who breach the law. If we start from there, this will stop. There is a committee in parliament that is responsible for roots. There is a committee in parliament that is responsible for finance. Why are they not carrying out their oversight responsibilities? If they should start doing this, we won't have these situations. So what is happening is that we commit, we award contracts that we don't have money for. We spend money to mobilize the people, and then they can't do the work. Now, if we put all those mobilization together, you could have used it for something else, in healthcare or somewhere else. And we waste it. That is our problem in this country. Nobody's accountable for anything. Nobody's responsible for anything. Mm. So Mr. Tabedu adds another interesting word there, that is accountability. But uh, Mr. Hutton, you can look at accountability from the other angle because people expect development. 
and people expect delivery on promises. That is why most people vote. And so when my road is not bad and you come back and tell me that, oh, we don't have enough money so we can't pay, um, how, how am I supposed to take that? Yeah, thank you. You know, I, I remember very well uh, 2016 when the president, uh, then the, uh, what do you call it, uh, a candidate, met us as an association. This is one point that I raised, that it is very important that politicians communicate with the citizenry, tell us the bare facts, and we would understand. So that if I know very well that this year my road cannot be tackled because there isn't enough funds, I would rather request for portal patching on the road so that next year it can be taken care of. Now, if, if, if you don't communicate with us that way, and you know the problem is that almost every member of parliament wants his road to be uh, uh, in, a, in a good shape. Because every and, citizen wants their roads in yes, good shape. Yes, and, and, and because of that, they are even unable to uh, raise the necessary queries and all of this when these things happen. Because maybe he's even scared that, hey, you go and raise it, and then I want my road to be done. You go to the minister, and the minister will say, ah, but you said in parliament that blah, 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 blah. You know, so um, the, the problem is the fact that we, number one, we are unable to tell the citizens the truth, look at them in the face and tell them the truth, that look, we don't have enough money. Number two, the citizens themselves also are not prepared to pay more to enable a government get enough funds for the uh, road maintenance. Because, listen, 2010 was the last time this road uh, uh, tolls was increased. Between 2010 and tw 2019, that's nine years, getting to 10. Mm -hmm. And 50 pesos in 2010 is not the same as 50 pesos in 2019. Sure. We were in uh, Zimbabwe about two years, three years back. And you know how much they pay for tolls? Salunka, two dollars. Two United States dollars that for a Salunka. Cities today. Yes. And you know, um, if, for instance, let's take the fuel levy. The fuel levy, for instance, it took us more than 10 years to get government to agree to the increase. But fortunately for us, when that increase was done, it was almost commensurate with what the World Bank had recommended. That's nine cents a dollar from 1985. The plan was that by 1998, we should be paying nine cents on a liter of fuel as a levy. Okay. You know, now it got to a point where it was less than two cents because of the fact that politicians were scared. You mm. go and increase it and Ghanaians will say, hey. Mm. And unfortunately for us, if a particular government is in power, mm. the opposition will condemn it. Even though they know very well that it is the truth and that is what has to be done, they will condemn it. And so then if you get back into power, you're also scared to do that because of what you did in the past. But fortunately, I think President Mahama did very well when he took the bull by the horn and decided that, look, let's go to this 40 pesos per liter, which was then equivalent to about nine cents, or, or okay. if, not, in, if not a little bit more. Okay. But if Ghanaians continue to resist these things and our, our, our politicians are also scared to take the, the necessary decisions that, and measures that would ensure that there is enough money in, our, in mm -hmm. the road fund to maintain these roads, then it will be like the citizens will be complaining that we are not seeing anything being done and the government will also be complaining. Okay. Everybody will be complaining. Uh, so Raymond is also here. Ray, is it that we are not taking enough mm. money because you are, you are looking at... We are not at accounting for what oh, you we are... are not yes. accounting for what we are taking. Three things. Check the last five years of the report reports specifically on... And let's be clear. Road toll, it goes into the road fund and the road fund is for maintenance of roads, exactly. not building new roads. No. That's what we should get clear in this particular case. Now, consistently, the Auditor General has raised queries about projects that are not being done well, about monies that it cannot explain how the utilization was done or how the money was given out to people under these. In fact, there are people who have raised specific, how do you call it, certificates, that even the Auditor General has questioned it is yet to receive response for a very long time. I'm brought in the last three years as an important one. Two, it is difficult to tell me who recently used the Abri Road and when you are descending. 
you are descending at 2 a.m., the lights are off. One, two. There are various parts that you have to struggle to navigate properly. What they consider to be protection from out there is not as strong as you think it should be. And when I get there, Daniel, the only place you see there is light is where the road to booth is. So you give me a lot of reasons to think that you don't care about my situation. The same with the motorway. Remember, it took a lot of talk to fix small potholes that that, that is killing people on this trade to deal with in a much more comprehensive manner. So when these things happen, you cannot justify increases, especially when there's evidence to show that their monies have been misused and it's been reported in times past. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. One of the main queries this government raised against the then Rose Minister and the Rose Ministry prior to that was that there is a lot of mishap when it comes to the utilization of the road fund and the monies in there. So we need to review that first. You do recall that the government came out to say some billions or so had been taken out without justification. It is after saying it came back with a response. But up to today, how am I assured that any increment going forward or even keeping it now is not going to go to waste as has happened in times past and going to make any impact? We need proper accounting of how much we have collected over the period. We need proper accounting of what the money has been used for. And that can inform my action going forward. You made a point, and, and to be fair, where I live, I remember there was one night that some work started from 10 p.m. By the time I woke up in the morning, it was a Saturday. Proper asphalt. I mean, impressive asphalt. Very, very thick. Compared to what was the case prior to that. I was impressed with that kind of road. I was very, very impressed. I mean, that road is busy in front of my house. You know the place. Yes. My difficulty is that I then ask myself, how much did this cost me? I hope you get what I'm trying to say. The vice president said before that we pay $2.8 million for every kilometer of the best of the roads we build in this country. $2.8 million. In 2004, we were told we were paying $1 million for that. So where from the $1.8 million increment? I want to believe that with time, cost and all the other elements are part of it. Yeah, Mr. But Mr. are we getting the very best for it? Mr. Hutton was telling us yesterday about how it goes into things like cost of bitumen and cost of chippings. But if you look at the dollar value of what we are paying, yeah. and you compare, because chippings are produced locally. You can say we import bitumen, but chippings are produced locally. So if you look at the dollar value of what we are saying, that's jump. It's, it's quite high. But anyway, let me take that question to um, Kobna at Tabidu. The point Raymond raises, Mr. Tabidu, is that it's about accountability. And I have Timor from Osu agreeing with him. He says, why should I pay $2, two dollars when you don't even publish how much was raised from Roto and how much was spent? Don't deceive yourself. The higher the corruption, the higher the resistance. You agree? Exactly. That's what I, wanted. I was interjecting initially. Mm. That the Ghanaian will not accept any more taxes if the government cannot tell us what they did with the previous ones. Listen, we signed a loan with the um, Brazilian Development Bank. We took $290.64 million for the Eastern Corridor Road. I trekked that Eastern Corridor Road last weekend. I went to Hohoi for a funeral. Now, along that project, there is the Asikuma Junction to Have, which is 45 kilometers. There is Have to Huawei, which is 30 kilometers. Put it together, that is a total of 75 ki- ki- kilometers. Now, I check that route. And between uh, Asikuma Junction and Huawei, I can tell you the terrible patches in that road. And the road that is claimed to have been done less than five years. Go and look at the, the state of the road. The first question is, where is the contract? What is supposed to be the technical specification for that road? When I look at it, that road, it is not asphalt. And even if it is bitumen, it is not even six inches thick. Now you ask the road contractor in the studio, what is the standard specification of that kind of road? That road is supposed to be a first-class road. So if it's a first-class road, the thickness has a certain minimum standard it's supposed to meet. How you compact it has a standard it has to meet. It's supposed to meet a certain pressure level. Now, that, that's certainly what we are doing to ourselves in this country. 
is that we have people who are sitting there dishing out contracts, both politicians and their civil servants or public servants. And they dish out the contracts and they don't make sure that we are getting value for the money we spend. People take contracts and do anything they want and we will pass a certificate for completion and we will pay. And then when you finish, you turn around to come and ask us to pay more. Hell no. Okay, Mr. Atabe, you, 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 you raised some very strong points that I'll allow Mr. Hutton to respond to before we take the next few messages. But I'd really like for us to move to other modes of financing, which is uh, the Sino Hydro model, for instance, that government is now using. Uh, Mr. Hutton, specific questions were raised about the Eastern Corridor Road, for instance, and how with even some external funded um, projects, we are still not seeing the quality we want. Well, um, when it comes to quality issues, I, I, I know that it's the Ghana Highway Authority or Department of Urban Roads or most of the agencies under the ministry, they are supposed to carry out this supervision and then pass the works and then the contractor is finally paid. And so if any problem crops up later, sometimes these things happen because of unanticipated issues at the project site. Maybe at the time that they were doing their job, certain natural occurrences had not taken place and so these things happen and then it affects the quality of the work after the project has been executed i i, I heard him talking about the thickness i think usually it's 150 mm mm-hmm. that is uh, done for these uh, uh. these roads and that is mostly for the newly uh, new roads that are being constructed to the asphaltic level but then for the asphalt overlay that we're doing in town and all of this of late that's around between 70 mm and uh, 100 mm. But I agree, all these are very expensive activities. And so if you want to uh, carry out such activities, you have to make sure that the road itself is ready to take it. But if the road is already pothole filled, and you just go and patch the potholes and then lay the asphalt, it means you are just postponing uh, a bigger problem. In, in the very near future. So you realize that a lot of the asphaltic surfaces that we are doing around, they don't last too long like ex- as expected. The lifespan is, is very short. And that is where I would agree with any Ghanaian who is talking about the fact that, look, we are spending too much money and we are not seeing uh, uh, the right thing being done or maybe the road does not last as expected. So, Mr. Hutton, what happens on the road between the supervisors, whether it's urban, feeder or highways, what happens on the road between the supervisors and the contractors that produces work that we are not satisfied with? Well, it could, it could be due to lack of effective supervision. It, it could be, you know. And I can tell you, a lot of these things come about right from the tender stage. Okay. The things that happen at the tender stage, I'm very, very interested in. So i would ask you to hold on to that for me. When we come back from these messages, we'll continue with this conversation. And we are looking, first of all, like I said, what happens so that we get road quality that we are not satisfied with? And what are the other ways that we can finance some of these projects? Stay with us. This is a super morning show. We'll be right back. I want you to first think big, not small. Think of how great we can be when we work together. Together, we can ensure that our hard work will provide a better future. Together, we can provide a foundation for you and your business to succeed, regardless of its size. Together, we can create opportunities for all. Bank with us today and let's journey forward together. Forward together. Cow Bank, forward together. Bibiara wa meoko Luciano le meoko No fia no ye meoko What are you looking for? Welcome guys it's all Greatest count do do Ya ma fia so Best bargains on our days Everything here is a bargain High quality Good be your priority So tell your mom Tell Poppy, tell your actually everybody.
star at Volta Serene Hotel, we are celebrating the holidays with two tourism ambassadors, Ivo Nelson and Ajete Anan. Volta Serene Hotel, your cultural, diversified, and family hotel in Hope presents a regal edition of Easter to our patrons and family from the 19th to the 22nd of April 2019. This wonderful package includes the musical sessions with the acclaimed musical group Kwampa Live Piano, Bonfire Night, a Grand Deba at Petwe Agoti Makente Weaving Site, and a visit to other tourist sites. Do join us on the 21st of April 2019, Easter Sunday, for Volta Region Premiere of Sin City. Rate is 25 Ghana cities for single and 45 Ghana cities for double. 3 p.m. is the first show, and the second show is at 7 p.m. Tickets available at Volta Serene Hotel, Global 105.1 FM, Stambic Bank, and all total filling stations in Hope. Call 0205 038 762 extension 3 and 0362 Hi, my name is Adam Knight Tay, host of Home Affairs here on Joy FM. It's that time again for us to show love to our underprivileged brothers and sisters on the streets. Your superstation Joy 997 FM presents the annual Easter the Soup Kitchen. This year, we warmly invite you to join us feed counsel, entertain, and provide medical aid to the less privileged in our society. We invite you to donate charitably towards the Joy FM Easter Soup Kitchen. You can do this in cash or in kind at the front desk of Joy FM Kukum Nimli. There is so much you can give. Bags of rice, bottles of cooking oil, soft drinks, cartons of chicken and fish, flour, pharmaceutical products, and many others. You can also call 302 216540 or 244 and we will gladly pick up your donations from wherever you are. Is the soup kitchen is powered by your superstation Joy 997 FM and supported by you, our loyal business. Coffee in your cup and joy on the set. The Super Morning Show is always the best bet on Joy 99.7 FM. Them. My name is Daniel Tazi. In the studio with me is Ebo Hutton. Ebo is the former chairman, the immediate past chairman of the Association of Road Contractors. Raymond Dakwa is also here. And on the phone lines with us is Kobna Tabedu, who is a procurement expert. We are discussing road projects. You know, yesterday, uh, we were having a conversation about why we don't have quality roads in the country. And we came to the conclusion that, look, it's a matter of money. That discussion has evolved to it's a matter of poor planning and management and also accountability with the monies that we give government. So the money that we pay governments to do roads for us, where does it go? And how do they plan those money so that they can pay as many contractors as possible? Those are the questions we are trying to find answers to. If you have any answers, you can also text them in 244 437 Of course, we made all efforts to have the roads ministry represented on the show. Unfortunately, they could not join us or they did not join us. Let me take the thoughts of us here from Tema. He says, Daniel, I disagree with Mr. Abel Hilton for an increase in road tolls. Have the authorities accounted for what has been for what has and is being collected? Where's the data on that to the taxpayer? We need to know what the little that he says is being collected is being used for. And for that is the most important thing now. Because if roughly about 60,000 trips more or less are done on the motorway alone daily at the current toll rates, do you know how much will be collected in a day? And is he saying that is not enough? He should come again, please. I'll say from Tema. Speaking very, very strongly, you are not a popular man this morning, Mr. Hilton. Yeah, uh, Daniel, I agree that I'm not going to be a popular man. But then <laughs> I, I'm used to that. <laughs> One time my son had to call me and said, somebody's insulting me on air, so he's angry. I said, no, forget about that. You see, I've been a I'll, I'll, I'll let you expand on that in a moment, <laughs> but <laughs> let me acknowledge our sponsors this morning before we go on. Hey, hey, 
Okay, so you can get tickets for uh, the Roverman Productions' latest play, Dora Why, which is playing on the national at the National Theatre on 20th, 21st, and 22nd of April 2019 at 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. each day for 80 Ghana cities at various ticket outlets across the country, including here at Joy FM. You can also call us on 050-554-6010 or WhatsApp us on 050-554-6030 or email tickets at overmanproductions.com. Buy your tickets now. Overman Productions, be the difference. Now, GCB is your largest bank in Ghana and they offer salaried workers with their salary account at GCB personal loans within 24 hours. Visit any of our over 180 branches nationwide or call 0800-422-422 for a GCB 24-hour personal loan now and see that dream come true. GCB Bank is always your bank for life. Our text messages are brought to you by Afro Daniel Bagmas Last Year Lifetime and Glyco Travel Insurance Policy or Glyco Critical Illness Plan, pardon me, GSIP. Glyco, we cushion you for life. Now, the most comfortable chair in the world is called the Nightingale Extreme Comfort Chair and you can find it in Afrodan on the first floor of the Swansea Shopping Arcade. Go and feel the chair for yourself. You'll be amazed. Okay, uh, that took just about three minutes and I'm coming straight back to you, Mr. Ebo Hutton. You were saying that you are not popular and you are wow. used to it. Why? Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, because, um, because uh, I should say that as an association, we led in the agitation for the increase in the road tolls, increase in the fuel levies and all of this, because we knew the effect it was having on our businesses as a, because of the uh, uh, low income that was coming into the fund. I was a member of the road fund board between 2014 and 2016. And I can tell you that every year, the road fund board submits a report on its activities to parliament. So those who are saying they don't hear or they don't know or They've not heard about whether, I mean, we are not accounting for anything that comes in. It's not correct. The fund every year is supposed to, and they do. I don't know about now, but Forgive I can me. say... Forgive me, is it an audited report? Everything. Everything. Because just activities is not enough, and I'm no, sure no. we all agree on that. Yes, yes. The yes. auditors come in, they audit and everything, and then they submit that to Parliament. So it's done. If it's not being done in the last two years, I don't know. But at least I know that before... And after, or well, during the time that I was on the board, reports were being submitted to Parliament. Sorry, but just February, you heard the Auditor General says that I am now going to audit road contracts and also road constructions that over the period. And he gave himself up to 10 years, the last 10 years, to deal with that particular space. No. So, sorry, who are you dealing with? Are you talking about your internal auditor? No, Daniel, let me tell you. You see, the road fund itself... It's an independent body. It was established as an independent body, and the Minister of Finance didn't even have any control over the road fund. So what it is supposed to do is to sub submit annual reports to Parliament of all its activities, including its audited accounts. So... Um, so you are saying that audited by who? Yeah. No, oh, oh, no, they, they have a firm that audits them, and then they will it's submit... It's a private firm. Uh, yes, yes, it's not there. It's not so there. So they are uh, internal auditors. They are not internal auditors. They are external auditors working for road fund. Exactly. Not exactly. the auditor general's office. No. And not it's an account of. Okay. No, 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 okay. But, but okay. Have, I, I, I think that has been cleared we have to up. To clarify that mm -hmm. point, money accruing to the road fund is subject to the auditing processes of the auditor general's department, yeah. and it is it is audited. The audits come before the, uh, the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament and they are deliberated upon. If you remember, in 2010, the audit report on the road fund actually said that some 9 million Ghana cities had been uh, misappropriated between January 2010 and June 2010. The road fund came out and explained how that money was disbursed and how that money was spent and that the audit auditors got it wrong and that their responses were not factored into that audit. So it is not accurate to say that the road fund is not audited and that money accruing to the road fund is not accounted for. That is not true. Any money which is accruing to any public organization is audited under the supervision of the Auditor General. And the road fund money accruing there is audited and the audits are submitted and they are deliberated 
by the uh, Public Accounts mm. Committee of Parliament. I know that for okay. a fact. Thank you. I just wanted to re respond to a point which was raised by both uh, Raymond and, and, and uh, our friend Mr. on the phone Tabidu. about how are you asking for more when you are not accounting for what you receive. I have dealt with the accountability. The money is accounted for. But are we actually being asked to pay for more? I remember not too long ago, the, 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 the Charismatic Bishops Conference actually asked government, this is two years ago, actually asked government to increase the road, road toll. And they said that even in Zimbabwe, and, and he mentioned Zimbabwe, said in Zimbabwe, at the time that they issued their statement, which was signed by the, 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 the Bishop Conference General Secretary, who is Reverend Kwiside, he said that road toll was a dollar per car. In, 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 in Zimbabwe. And they were pointing out that in spite of all the, the economic turmoil in that country, this is how much they pay. Now, when you say, uh, don't ask me for more, are you actually paying what is appropriate, what is commensurate with what is happening within the sub-region? In okay. 2010, in 2010, when we increased road to, after we laid a legislative instrument in parliament in December 2009, it had been 10 years since we exactly. increased road to. Since 2010, we are in 2019, it's almost 10 years That's again, we have increased and road to. And there's inflation every and year. And you have inflation every year. And, and the dollar has slipped. Good. Every year, and you have need for roads every year. So when you insist that don't increase the road to, for a period of 10 years, there's absolutely no product in this country that maintains its price for 10 okay. years. Now, Malik, I, But I, that I, is what is happening with Malik, road it's two. a fair point that you are raising, okay? But the, the crux of the matter is not really a refute. We are, we are not really balking against an increment. It's about trust, which is why, Mr. Mr. Hewton, I need to ask the question. You were on a point before we went to the break about what happens in the... That goes back to the tender process. That we don't have proper supervision when we are on the roads. What happens there? How, why can't we trust um, these guys? No, okay. So let me tell you something. You know, there's this... Um, what we call the uh, lowest evaluated bidder, right? And this, this actually, I think, is an imposition or something that came from the World Bank some years back. Now, unfortunately for us, our understanding for the lowest evaluated bidder has always been the one who quotes less, which, of course, should not be the norm. But then that is how we've understood it. And so there's this competition, and if a project is about 100 million, you get somebody quoting 50 million. Right? And unfortunately, unfortunately, the project will be given to that contractor who has quoted 50 million. Even though in the past we had what we call not going 10% above or below the engineer's estimate. Now it's free. So you can quote. And then when you quote, and then the uh, engineers decide that, look, this is too low, the contractor can just go behind and lobby that, look, I have quoted 50 million for a project, and they are saying they are going to give it to somebody who has quoted 70 million or 80 million. The politician wouldn't even understand that. And straight away, he would think that, hey, the technocrats are sabotaging the, the country. And, and when the media get the wind of it, they I, say, hey, why are you giving the contract to this person? You mean we person? say, because you're in the media. <laughs> exactly. <Okay. laughs> you know, and if, if somebody for a project of 100 million it's being given it, uh, to him at 50 million. He goes to the site and automatically he realizes that, look, I can't do the job. But you're not dismissing the fact that the contracts do get padded in this country, that we inflate the cost of contracts. And yesterday, in this country. yesterday your, your successor, Mr. Agro, mentioned that. I, I, I want to bring in Mr. Tabedu quickly on this subject because we have really come to his playground, which is procurement. Uh, Mr. Tabedu, would you agree with the thoughts that? It goes back to the procurement processes, and that is where the problems with our road contracts begin. Fully. See, Ghana, we are running a procurement economy. So any way of making money starts with how we buy. How we buy starts with how we decide what to buy and when to buy it. That is the problem. If we can fix that one and make it very punitive, very, very punitive, then people would run away from it and people will not engage in stuff like that. I'm listening to your man in the studio and he's talking about the road fund and how they account. 
It goes back to the question I raised. What are those oversight committees in Parliament doing? When they receive the audited reports, what action do they take? It has become a talk shop. But then again, I can also ask what action can they take? Because we all know what happens with parliamentary oversight committees. They make recommendations to the executive, the same executive whom they drag before them to answer questions. So is it not down to the, the relevant powers that, that exist for parliament? It, it comes back to the rule of law and the, the, rule of, the law of separation of powers. Now, if the guy sitting in the committee is himself a minister and he has to go after his own colleague minister, will he do it? They will put party interest ahead of national interest. So they don't want the party to be in bad light. So they will never, they will never, he will never try his own colleague. So we have built a system that is allowing us to perpetuate corruption and to cover up for ourselves. I want those words to hang, <laughs> Mr. Atabedu, so I'll hold you there. We have built a system that allows us to perpetuate corruption. Interesting. I want to open the phone lines at this point and ask a simple question. Would you pay more road tolls if better roads would be guaranteed? Would you pay more road tolls if better roads would be guaranteed? Um, in other words, do you agree with Mr. Hutton or you want to beat him? Um, Can I make a point? Okay, whilst <laughs> I wait for my first caller. <laughs> yes. Okay, so share the one minute amongst yeah, you yourselves. Know, Daniel, the fact is that if whatever comes into the road fund is well managed and used properly, Ghanaians will see the effect. Because yes. you see, if you spread the thing, you hardly will see the effect. And people will say you are not doing anything. So proper management for you will be focusing on projects you can begin and finish. Exactly. Okay, let me hold you there, Raymond. And we need, we need to get this straight, Malik. Road fund is not for construction of new roads. No. It's for maintenance. maintenance of old ones. Absolutely. Yes, and I know that. Yes, but you said that if people expect fresh construction to be done, it cannot be that they will have expectation of fresh construction in their mm. area without roads. Mm. So we need to look elsewhere yeah, no, for the monies to build new yes, roads. Yes, that, that's different from the road fund. Again, I said that the auditor reports are consistently fingered. People at the road fund and also people implementing these contracts are doing a lot of wrong. And the amount I'm coming... If you give me a second, I'll quote okay, the amount. Okay, okay. Let, let me give you a second. Whilst we are checking the amounts, Abu Mohammed is on the phone lines from Japan. Check the amount and bring it. Um, good morning, Abu. Hello, good morning. Great. Let's hear you. Yeah, what I would advise they do is they will have to find money and do the road. After that, then they can increase. We will accept. But for paying, we've been paying for so long, nothing has been done. That stretch of road from Akuma Junction to Have as the man is talking, I know that road very well. The road was constructed less than two years ago, less than two years, and people were on the road, patching the road again. If we use Akole to Nuatu, less than three years, you just walk on the road. If it's Pentanaminto, you look, it's very fresh. But a few times, then there's a lot of potholes. So Thank you very much, Abu, for calling. Uh, Kofi Aite is also on the line from Kashima. Good morning, Kofi. Good morning. Kofi, turn off the radio for me, please, and let's hear you. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Zero three zero two two one six five four one zero two four four three four zero four three seven. Would you pay more tolls if it would guarantee better road quality? Uh, uh, Kofi, what do you think? Uh, bitumen. We import into this country, isn't it? Yes. For road construction. Well, not just road construction, but we import bitumen. Okay, Ghana. The oil refinery uh, purifies and extracts fuel, both uh, petrol and uh, diesel. Isn't the uh, residue, the bitumen, and in that case, uh, why aren't we producing bitumen? So the cost of road construction will go down. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that point. Kofi Aite from Kwashiman. Uh, when you mentioned Tema Oil Refinery, it has sparked the debate as to whether or not they are working in the studio. <laughs> whether or not Tema Oil Refinery is working. Uh, that's also another debate. Kofi Bajema is calling from Kumasi. Kofi, what do you think? Would you pay higher tolls for better quality? Kofi? Yeah, Dan. Yes, would you pay higher tolls for better quality? You see, Daniel, mm -hmm. if 
we have good quality. Why not? But we will pay higher and you will get lower quality. If the uh, 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 engineer in the studio will be sincere to himself and to Ghana, the asphalt that we have in Ghana, it's not the first class asphalt. It is the third class asphalt, and they will come and quote first class price. What is this? It oh. is because the politicians want to make profit. So why is it that the, 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 the uh, engineers don't insist on giving us first class asphalt? Good question. Um, I'll put that to Mr. Hewitt in a moment, but Sam is calling from Tesano. Good morning, Sam. Hello, good morning, Dan. Great. Let's hear you. Would you pay higher tolls for better road quality? Oh, Dan, but you know my answer already. I know. I, you'll have to tell me. <laughs> Dan, the answer is no. Not in Ghana. It will never happen. No matter the amount we pay, it will never happen. Dan, last, last two weeks, I made a journey on a road and I feel like crying. In uh, 2015, that same road that your 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 this thing was talking about from Esikuma, I travel on that road to Pando, and then to Aflau, uh, to Pando to Ho, then Aflau. Mm. Then I use 45 minutes, and I think the same contractor because that 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 this road, that uh, Pando road, and then the Aflau Ho road. I think they were the same time in 2015. Right. The contractor mm. was doing the road at the mm. same time. Then. Mm. Between a flower, between Ho and a flower, I used 45 minutes at 2015, and there were potholes, but the road was under construction. Then wow, could you, could I you... made the same journey uh-huh. from, from Ho to a flower, and, and then I feel like crying. I used almost two hours. It, it means that the potholes had more than triple. And then the thickness of the asphalt, you can't even measure. I feel like crying down last two weeks on the road. 45 to two, two hours. Hmm. Kofi, thanks for, for joining us with these thoughts. And as for the cost of a bad roads when we are driving, it's, it's so much. A prince is calling from Kumasi. He's our last caller. Good morning, Prince. Good morning, Danny boy. How are you doing? I'm blessed, Prince man. Let's hear you. Mm. Um, just let me give you a quick example. I'm in Kumasi here, and um, our land, uh, landfill is at Oti, Kumasi landfill, the waste. That's where we take it. Um, they always hear me complain that they run at a loss. They are not managing, um, they always run at a loss when managing the landfill. So I went there, did my own investigation. The Abu Buya, who takes the, um, our, our waste to that place, they pay 15 cities, uh, like, you know, a truck kind of. And then upon my checks, I got to know that it's less than five cities that goes to the KME. So it's those two people who manage the thing. It takes more than what is going to the KME. They, miss, they you know, and that's that kind of 10 CD per truck. It just, that's what happened to the uh, tools. You can't go uh, fetch water into a basket and expect it to be full. Don't, don't let's cheat ourselves. We know these guys who manage the tools. They have big buildings and stuff like that. We shouldn't check ourselves and laugh. That is the thing. We can't um, fetch water in a, a basket and expect it to be full. In a basket or a leaky bucket and expect it to be full. So it comes back to the trust, really. That was Prince from Kumasi. Thank you very much. Um, there's an interesting question here. Kweku from Adenta says, Good morning, Daniel. Every year, the Road Fund Board goes to London for two weeks, getting to the end of the year. What do they go to London to do? Is that is that the case? <laughs> Mr. Houston, is that the case? You go to London at the end of the year. Well, um, I never had the opportunity. But yes, during that period, some people went. It's actually... Um, part of the more or less like an orientation system that you do orientation in London. It's not. It's not like uh, mostly. You know, when the the board is set up, the new people who come in, I think it's Cambridge University or something that they go to, and they are exposed to, to uh, a lot of uh, ideas and uh, issues that they think will support them and assist them <laughs> in in their uh, uh, running of the board. <laughs> But, um, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. I don't know whether <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Been happening because <laughs> Mr. 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 Mr
<laughs> in the past, yes, they they went for uh, not only orientation but uh, exposure. Hey, go for my dentist. Go for my dentist. Thank you for your text yeah. message. Flesh and blood. I, I, I you to Cambridge <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. okay. I, I need to give thirty seconds each. To all of my guests, if I'm going to give a reprieve to anyone, it will be Mr. Hilton because Thank he's our best. Thank he's our guest. I mean, Raymond, you go first. 30. 30. Last 10 years, Auditor General has been reporting that abuses on the road fund alone is up to 2.14 billion. Ghana that tells you the entire story. And that is the whole Convince show. Raymond Aqua until this are resolved with the greatest of respect. You cannot fetch water into that basket. That I basket. That, that, that Raymond, basket. That that before. Okay, Raymond, your 30 is yes, up. Raymond, Malik. the Auditor General has indicated abuses across the economy then yes. we may as well stop paying taxes a two thousand luckily when we get to the other sections no, we can deal with that but now Wait, 2009 study of road tools by the world bank indicated that ghana's road tools were one twentieth of what they ought to be one twentieth in 2010 we increased it tenfold mm -hmm. it's been almost 10 years everything has remained stagnant I do not think okay. that even the abuses you point okay. to are a justification for underpayment. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, your 30 is up. Finally, um, Mr. Hilton, your, your final words. Thank Can you, you convince much. Raymond in 30 yeah, seconds? Thank you very much. I think that um, the concerns that Ghanaians have expressed and even within their studios are, very they are justified. Mm -hmm. But what I, I want to say is that it, is, it, it makes it more necessary for the Road Fund Board to manage the funds that come in yes. such that the, the right impact can be made yeah. so that when a request comes in for an increase or a review yes. of the tolls and the levies, Ghanaians will fully accept it. So we need to decide on whether we want to do asphalt within the townships or, and cities or we want to go back to the village and do the roads in the village so that the food that is coming from this uh, planting for food and, food, and jobs. Can, uh, food and jobs can reach the market. Mm. Instead of the aesthetics that we see in town, which doesn't produce anything. Okay. And so we need to manage the fund very well, use it where it's supposed to be, and avoid using the fund to pay for huge contract sums. Okay. Contracts which are beyond the maintenance uh, level. Those, those jobs, those funds mm. are supposed to come from the Ministry of Finance. The consolidated fund is supposed to take care of the huge projects. Mm. But if you ask the road fund to take off a 50 million contract, 40 million contract, and all of this, then it means you are abusing the fund. Okay, uh, so this is, thank you very much, Mr. Paul Hilton, first of all, for coming here and for your very, very insightful contributions. The London one was the killer. Um, <laughs> so we started this conversation yesterday. We, are con we continue today and we can't finish it. So uh, we will bring it back and we'll continue with this issue of how, because we didn't even touch Sino Hydro, yeah. which is something that is very important yeah, that we need to look at. You, I really had something to, to raise on that. Mm. Sino Hydro. Sami, I Maybe beg you, give me one yeah, minute. See, um, there is... There's a local content uh, a portion of this Sino Hydro thing. And we think that it is very important that the ministry would consult or together with those who would be carrying out these activities, discuss and agree on the strategy towards this. Because you see, the question is who is going to determine who is going to pay who? Who is going to give the contract out? Is it the, the, the contractor who is going to sublet that 30% to the local contractor? And who is going to determine the rates? And we want to bring this thing out because of the experiences we've had in the past, especially with Chinese contractors. They usually pay very, very low to subcontractors that uh, they engage for their works. But and then so again, having these contractors been met already, I understand that they have been chosen and they've been going through some orientation. Well, I, uh, we don't know about that. As an association, we don't know about that. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Hilton, once more for, uh, for sharing your thoughts and coming with us. But we'll, we'll continue this conversation. And thanks to all our listeners for taking interest in this matter of key importance. We'll take this quick batch of messages. When we come back, we'll zoom straight into our hotline documentary for the day, which is Born Too Soon, a preterm birth, a very, very key issue which we don't talk about enough in this country. We'll be back to deal with it. At Afro